How to use patterns in Paintstorm Studio. This is a run through of some of the features of the patterns. Key tool, the fill tool. Just go over to the tools panel and you'll see some options. Now I'm pushing the tolerance up to a fairly high value, mainly because I want to fill the entire design. Now you could, of course, also use this with selection. So you can create a selection and fill the selection as well. That's another option. I'm not going to use some of the other settings, the reference layer, all layers, I'm going to, not going to use. But the key one is the drop down there. This main color is the default, but you can use pattern, you can use pattern plus color, etc. With the pattern option or the other pattern options available, you can select a different pattern. And there's a whole range of different patterns that come with Paintstorm. Also, you can add your own. They're all split into different folders. So you can create your own folders as well. So you've got canvas folder, you've got texture folder. So select a pattern and then just apply it. And it will be applied with the current scale. And you can change the scale by that slider and you can see a nice preview when you move the scale. Also, you can just go to the field itself and enter like value 100%, 200%, etc. So you just click on that and set it 200 or 500, etc. There's also option for invert and mirrored repeat. They're quite useful as well. It verts the image, the pattern, and also the mirrored repeat just applies the pattern slightly different. And you can see some variation in some patterns. Obviously, some patterns you won't see any effect at all. But I will show an example later. You can also use the offsets as well to move things around. And there's also blends as well, which are quite useful as well as opacity. So now you've selected that, and I'm just going to go with the vertical lines there. And now you can see the scale. Obviously, the scale is slightly a bit extreme there. So I can change the scale, and you can see the preview as I move that up. Now, when I change the offset now, you can see the offset, it just moves backwards and forwards. Now, of course, because it's uh, vertical lines, the vertical has no effect whatsoever. But if you had a design which was more, obviously, better for that, you would actually see the difference. I'm going to select one there, so select that design, and then apply it. And you can change the vertical. Now you can see when you apply that, you move it up and down, go backwards and forwards. Now when you click on the document, it's applied. There's the design. Now you can also use that little box that's beside it. Now that just clicks it instantaneously and applies the fill as is currently. There's the invert option. You can see it's inverted. It has got a nice effect. Very quick invert. If it's applied normally, you can see the difference. And also there's a mirrored repeat. Now some, you won't see any difference. Let's say you've got there, you can actually see the way in the center there, you can see the divide is slightly repeated differently. And that's the difference between that option and the other option. So you can see there's the normal, the default option. Again, you can see there, if I move that, change the scale, and again, mirror repeat, and you can see that it does create some different designs. You can see a slightly different design than if you applied it normal. Up to you. Again, you can change the offsets, but you can also change the blending modes. Now you can combine now. So if I've got a gradient on there or something, or a solid color, etc., you can make some really interesting, colorful effects. And I might do a tutorial about that. So I've got the design there, and I just apply it. And that's using the blending mode of difference. Now if I change the scale, you can see I go over it, you will see you create different designs. So I just apply that. And it really only does that, obviously, with the tolerance setting fairly high. Otherwise, it wouldn't apply. So you can create some very unique, actually quite textured designs. And also, of course, what you can do once you've applied it, you can go to the filters menu, maybe apply a blur just to create even more subtle designs.
and you cause not just difference, you've got dark and light and, and many others. And obviously it depends on the colour and all those sort of things, the end result and what type of pattern you've got. I'm just going back. Now I could use like any of the others as vivid light, hue, saturation, etc. But probably most time you'll probably use now lighten has no effect whatsoever, obviously, with a white background. Darken, it does. And you can also use your pasty. You can change that. I'm going to put that back to normal now. You can change your pasty, so make it reduce it down, and that will make it look more faded. So you can see it's faded away there. even fainter. Now you can also change the pattern and colour. I'm going to push the pasty up to 100%. But you can go with pattern and colour. What will that do? Well, it depends now on the colour of the, the colour panel. So I just change the colour to say the purple. And now it will be applied in purple. Strange enough. It would be weird if it went green. Mm. You can select green and apply a green and get your design there. And that uses the current pattern and the scale, of course. And you can click on. Now you can use this with maybe another one. It's going to go with that one, the lines, the stripes. And again, you'll get green stripes. And of course, what you can then do, of course, is you could maybe shift offset with a different color and apply it again to get different colors combinations. Now, you can also use this with a colorful design as well, a colorful pattern. So now you get a green design there. There's also an option at the bottom, pattern plus colour plus opacity. That's quite useful as well. That creates some interesting designs. So you've got a design now, just apply this design now. Now go on to the black part of the design and click on there. Well, actually, key thing is, actually, no use if you've got the same pattern, of course. There's no effect whatsoever. But a way around that, of course, is quickly just go and change the scale or change the pattern. Just reduce the scale there. And now apply it. And select a different pattern, even. That one's just as reasonable. Click OK. Just go to those tiles. So if you go to the black and apply it, you can see the result there. Click again to another tile. But this time, maybe go for one of the red ones. If I go for all those dark ones, they will be applied all the same. We'll just change the colour a bit, so go for orange. Maybe purple. You can see apply purple there. Again, these to the dark tiles. You can also use blending modes, of course. So difference. Well, in case, obviously, when it's black, it's still going to be purple. But if you go to one of the, say, lighter colours, the reds, etc., you will see there is a slight change. It's actually quite small because of the, uh, the picture here. So you increase the scale. And again, you go over there and you can see there is a difference. The difference is applied and that's using the color, the underlying color, obviously opacity. That's what you're using. I mean, it might have some, you might have some use for that. I think generally pattern plus colour or pattern is probably more useful. I'm just going to quickly undo all these. And go back to a fresh document. Now you can always, of course, recolour the design. Use maybe the filters menu and use the smart colour correction as well if you want to recolour things as well. That's quite useful. So this time I'm using pattern plus colour. And you, what you can do, you can go to layer menu and new layer. So I've created a new layer. I'm going to just change the colour now to orange and apply it again. Now I could change the scale, of course, or blending mode, and so on and so on. 
So I applied now orange. Change the scale a bit. And of course, you could change the pattern as well. You don't have to use the same pattern. So I applied that. Now we can go over to the layers panel and then change the blending mode. Or maybe the opacity. Or maybe go with darken, dark color, difference, lighter color, and so on and so on. So you can create some interesting pattern designs by just doing this a combination of two layers. But you can also, of course, combine three, four, five, ten layers. Also, you can, what you do with each of those layers, you can always go and maybe apply a warp or maybe filters, menu, and blur. So you can blur it, blur the pattern. So you've still got the underlying pattern and you've got the pattern on top that's been blurred. And of course, what you can do, you can set both of those and you can then merge them together. Go to the layer menu and merge layer down. So they're all one single layer. Well, you can also, of course, apply filters to that as well. So you can go to warp. Maybe use canvas or layer to you. Click OK. And then you can change the size and strength and hardness, etc., as well as the resolution. And you can warp that design. So from a straight pattern, you can create some more interesting patterns and a very basic pattern design. And of course, there's twirl option, etc., and bloat. So there's your distorted pattern. Now I'm just going to quickly undo that. Put it back to a fresh document. These are the uh, layers I created there, etc. Right, back to a fresh document at this point. What you can also do, you can go to the fill tool again. And if you go over to the panel there, what you can do, you can import your own patterns. Go down to the bottom and there's an import texture. Now make certain you're in the correct folder that you want to use. You notice there's also there's a create new folder. So you can create a new folder for yourself. So select that pattern. And then you can import new texture. You can also delete it if you wish. But if you want to import new texture, it ports, say, like a PNG file or maybe a JPEG. I'm not certain all the formats that are available, but I use PNG format. So let's go for, now you can go for gray or color. So you can bring it in as a gray design, gray scale, or you can use color. Personally, you might as well bring it in colour because you can always go for the grayscale if you wish. And just go and find a PNG file. And I've got some antique designs here. Just select one of those PNG files and click OK to import it. Now you can see it appear there. Click OK. And just apply. Now I'm using pattern plus colour here. So obviously it's been applied with the current scale yeah, there's the design but you can change the scale you can change the different options pattern pattern plus color etc there's the design there so there's a whole range of features you can use with these patterns and textures Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Always any new tutorials about Photoshop, Paintstorm, etc. Please add some comments. Always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.